Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Iat Skittles from the Gaming Canucks YouTube channel and here we have the first of many games from the Last Player Standing Tournament from Big Surprise, LastPlayerStanding.com and it's an open tournament for Masters to or Diamond actually, to Grand Masters level players from various regions of the world for instance right here we have uh, Zephyr Prime he's from the Prime Clan and he's actually a Korean player I believe his real name is Baboom Prime. I'll have to check that out, and I'll put it in the description of this video. The I believe the videos will also be up on LastPlayerStanding.com. This is the second tournament that they've hosted, second open tournament, and let's get into it. The map here is GSL Crevasse. Uh, it's most notably for its easy, super easy to defend natural right here. You're looking at it, and you know it's behind your actual base. It doesn't have its own ramp. It's a little bit vulnerable to air, but there's enough room back here for missile turrets and whatnot, so that's all good. And yeah, that's about all I can think to play. Pop up those tabs before I forget. Up here in the top left corner, we have the Red Zerg Zephyr Prime, as I mentioned. He is a Korean player. I'm not entirely sure about his general standing or even league. He may be anywhere from Diamond to Grandmaster, but given that he is a Cor he normally plays on the Korean server anyway, that's not to say he's actually from Korea. Uh, but. I don't actually know anything about his league in particular, or about his opponent, who is Holy, the <laughs> Purple Terran. Uh, I'm just amused by his name, sorry. Who appears to be walling off at the front. There's the dis destructible debris here. Doesn't have all that much health, only a thousand. Same as our barracks, right? It's a lot easier to kill than most destructible debris. But it blocks off half the ramp. Makes a good choke for the year of the game, at any rate. And the Zerg has already gone ahead and taken this. I believe he expanded on 15 there, given the timing of that. And he felt safe to go hatch before pool, can't really blame him. I mean, you, you look at this distance, we're going to scroll down and across and see how long it takes. Here we go. Also, there's a bunch of Zelnogs in the middle here, four of them. And yeah, it would take forever to get from one corner of this map to the other, so rushes are not particularly common, especially spawning in cross positions like this. It just doesn't make any sense. Sets us up for some good, entertaining macro games. And that's what everybody likes to watch, really. And there's also this fairly easy to take third. The third is easy to take, but it also has two entrances here, so... This one's destructible debris on it again. 2,000 health this time, so it's a little more difficult, but it's still... You know, you can knock it down pretty quick, and then there's two entrances into this, so... Holding it in the later game is not easy. Taking a fourth is really not easy at all, because... As you can see, this all the way fourth here. It's got, what, three entrances right there? That's... that's a lot. And there's one down here with actually a rich Vespian geyser. Only one geyser, which is something I forgot to mention on this hidden expansion back here. It only has one normal geyser. So it doesn't it's not as good for gas, but it gives you all those minerals. And really, that's all you need. And it looks like our Terran is gearing up here for well he's got one racks, one factory, and just starting the command center now in his back natural. Makes perfect sense. He appears to be mostly walled off, not quite walled off. Going up over here, let's play some fancy camera work. There's no space there, but he doesn't really need a full wall off. There's not going to be any rush zerglings coming in when he's got these five marines just kind of sitting around. Back over on the zerg's base, we're seeing not a whole lot. Metabolic boost got started a little bit ago. Actually, a Hellion coming out for the Terran now, so we're going to be seeing a bit of a Hellion opening. Maybe, maybe going for more Hellions in a harass, or possibly just one and pushing out with these five marines as well. I'm going to assume the Hellion's going to go catch up to them. Hey guys, here I come. Uh, the factory's not being used for anything anymore. No attachments on either of these two. Oh, there, tech lab on the factory. That. So we'll probably be seeing some tanks out here pretty soon. Pretty normal, and we are facing Zerg. I mean, marine tank, just the basic concept of the game. Let's follow these guys across the map. We're just marching along as the Hellion rips out front. Problem with this Hellion, I really don't know what to think about it. Uh, there's only one of them. It can't really do any economic harass. The best it can really hope for is a good solid scout before it gets destroyed. And it's really not going to have that much to see. It's going to see the Zerg <laughs> feeling safe to build nothing but a spawning pool. And then go straight for his lair. He hasn't saturated this geyser. He took the geyser on the expansion. But he's only actually on one gas because he has not saturated this one. And he hasn't taken the other one on his natural. I'll try to skip around a little less than I have been. Make it a little easier on you guys. 
Just the one spine color here at the front and oh, eight zerglings. That have actually gotten a bit of a fight. I missed that. They must have encountered the Hellion. I, I don't know how much of a scout the Terran actually got out of that Hellion. Let's see what he sees. He doesn't see anything, but you can he can assume that the Zerg has taken that expansion. I mean, what else would he do? These Zerglings are... Uh, they're going to go down, it looks like, but no, maybe not. And actually, managed to take out all five of those Marines. These two Zerglings now just moving up here. We did see a tank coming out. Siege mode is about halfway done. A little less than. Overlord Scout pushing on in, seeing that factory went, the Starper went down. Three racks, one starport, one factory with a tech lab, and a tank on the field. You know, nothing to get the Terran too excited, the Zerg too excited or worried. Seeing this third ge geyser fi finally get taken here. Zerg has pushed out and taken his third, actually. Looks like he saturated all these geysers now and go has gone for a spire. Where is it? Right over here. Has the Terran scouted that? He just scanned. No, he has not. The Terran has no idea this fire is going down. So it'll be interesting to see what he builds. Double engineering bay is going down. Good plan for the quick upgrades going on. Zerg has already got his melee attacks level 1 coming out. Perfect sense. If you, I guess Terran most people like to go Ling and Bane Ling. So I mean, melee attacks makes perfect sense to come out rather than the standard missile attacks that you get when you're going roaches. Which, personally, I like to do a lot. So... But these guys are much better than I am, or probably ever will be, so... It, as we can see, the Terran actually really has very few units. Well, I'm not entirely sure what all this ta supply is taken up by, but it must be mostly SCVs. As we're just seeing one tank, and two tanks, and five marines or so. Let's go to the unit counting station. 17 Zerglings and 48 drones. There's 38 drones. A medvac, three tanks, and 13 marines. That's really not all that much for this point in the game on either part, because we are at the 10 minute mark. But the Zerg has been going for his Mutalisks, and now that they're coming out, getting those flower attacks coming through as well, is, you're probably going to see his supply skyrocket pretty quick, because he does have this third fully done and starting to get saturated, as well as also having this macro hatch down in his base now. And we're seeing a bit of a drop here, just Marines, one mag back full of Marines, versus these, trying to get that spy- Ah, oh, he managed to get the Spire. There's our buddy here, Zephyr, cannot be too happy about that. Once he managed to take out a Mutalisk or two as well. Very unfortunate. Not a very good loss. Another Spire has now been started back in this portion of the base. It might be slightly well, more well defended. I uh, cannot talk. Because he's got these two Queens here, nice and handy. No real Baneling pressure coming out. A bunch of Lings and Mutalisks starting to push out. Go and give it a little bit of bother. Although it looks like the medvac did spot it. Two burrowed banelings right here. Oh, that's cheeky. <laughs> but, uh... Looks like with those... If he manages to lure these marines out properly, two banelings can do a whole lot of damage in the middle of a base. In the middle of a group of marines, rather. Not a base. Unless moving marines make a base. You can put I'll call it that if you want. Seeing the third go down here in the front of the, well, I guess it's an overall base, but you know, it's it's very large to be a base. And probably go out, take this pretty soon, or try to, anyhow. We're seeing a whole ton of upgrades coming through, that plus one, the stim pack's almost finished, 12 minute mark, so it was a little bit late, but you know, it's, it's he went for tanks, rather, then going for those, that marine heavy builds. Saw an armory just finish, so we might be seeing some Thors out soon. Swarm assault turrets, whatnot, tanks. Baneling speed and melee attacks level 2, both coming through for the Zerg. Which, is it's impossible to guess when he might attack, but you know those two make a pretty fearsome combo. Fourth, just dropped here by the Zerg. Taken up in this hidden top right corner. And it's... Hoping that the Terran doesn't spot it, it, it. If the Terran doesn't spot it, it's a lot easier than trying to defend either this base right here, or this one up here. It's just... These ones can be a bit of a pain. But that top right should do fairly well. Breaking down this destructible debris. This creep spread by the Zerg is just phenomenal. Shooting creep tumors all over the place just because he can, really. He's got this whole corner of the map creeped out. And in a little while, we'll probably actually be able to take the whole map covered in creep. And we'll be get down to this Terran's base. And the creep comes to knock. And you got to get a little bit worried, I guess. 54 Zerglings on the way, so... 
definitely looking at massing up an army now. Must feel confident in his economy as it is. Which I would be too. <laughs> Selling four bases, I mean, why not? Be happy about that. Plus two and plus two for the Terran infantry coming through. As well as the plus one for those tanks. So Zerg won't isn't exactly ahead in the upgrade field, but it's kinda long. I believe the fire attacks was started before, but then it got cancelled as the spire got taken out. So he must have forgotten to restart it, because that's obviously quite a bit behind what he would like it to be. But oh brutal baneling detonation. Those two barrel banelings that were around there. I don't know how many marines they took out, but it wasn't pretty. Uh, a lot of Zerg streaming in here to take out these two tanks. Should do it fairly quickly as well as extra splash damage from, on, from the other tanks onto the marines here. Pulling the SCVs. Be able to stop these Zerglings, although the Mutalus will continue to just destroy everything that he has handy here. This other is going to have to lift up and run away to the safety of all the marines that aren't really there. There are very few marines here on this base. But Zerg will probably pull, pull back anyhow. Preserve those precious little Mutalisks. He did the damage he needed to, and that's all that really matters. Not all that marines is going. The unit. He's got 10 more marines coming through, which is given the amount of racks he has, he can reinforce the marines fairly quickly, but still. Given that they will soon be... They're currently 2-2 two, two marines, as opposed to... Oh, let's find a zergling around here somewhere. Oh, that's a lot of creep tumors. There's a lot of creep tumors. Looking at taking that fifth as well. Um, more mutalisks. Where are these zerglings? No zerglings. No zerglings. Maybe the drones can tell us. Drone. Nope. Because the Zerg had to have gotten an upgrade or two. Yeah, he's actually 2-0 on the uh, ground units. Apparently not a big fan of getting armor for them. Doesn't really matter if Zerg going to survive, right? You know, they're only 25 minerals apiece. Who cares if they survive? Beautiful little bit of Mutalisk Krask here. Krask. Yes, Mutalisk Krask. Run away as soon as those Marines get back. Seemed to be fairly effective. Forced a full pull of all these SCVs and killed quite a few of them as well as Missile Turret. All the SCVs come back down here and it looks like they're gonna try to run back to the other base. <laughs> Rather than wait until this one's finished. Much more Marines pushing out. And was the Zerg have in the middle here? That is going to be. Ooh, 15 Banelings. Between that 15 Banelings and oh, I don't know how many Mutalisks are sitting around here. Oh, 16. 21 Mutalisks, 15 Banelings and two, more than a page of Zerglings. Not going to count all those. Looking to finally actually take this all out. Probably roll in here with these. Uh, maybe he will hold back for the time being. Evidently decides it's just not worth it to run in there right now, although given these supply <laughs> differences, an 84 supply difference in the Zerg's favor, as well as the fact that he's got Hive coming through, his macro is just leaps and bounds ahead. He's on, oh, currently... Five mining bases, soon to be six, I think. Yep, just about six mining bases. So, a bunch of Zerglings mainly sitting over here for some reason. Not entirely sure, possible there was a drop there. I just didn't see it. Uh, 29 Banelings coming through. That is a lot. That can steamroll everything the Terran has. It doesn't matter if he has some tanks. Oh, Thor. Thor's cute. But that is a lot of Banelings. Two, one, actually. Attack and armor there, so that's pretty good actually. One investor on the field, only one. Two investors only. That's not all that many, but you know. Most of them looks like uh, ventral sacks. Maybe looking to do some overlord dropping if he takes it to this point. At the moment, the Zerg could really push in and steamroll the Terran, which it looks like he's about to do. A couple more burrow banelings over there. Looks like he's probably gonna leave them there because he can. Why not? And nope, getting a little scout of what's over here with the Mutalisks, Thors, and Missalters. Not Mutalisks friends, and yeah. Looks like he's just going to roll in here with these Banelings and kill everything really. Kill, kill, Banelings, kill. And lose all those, and the GG out of Foley. Overall, very good game between the two. This is the opener round, first one that we have cast. Not necessarily the first one that occurred, but the first game that we have cast and arrived to us, so... Hope you enjoyed it. There will be many more where that came from, as I believe we have another eight games, seven more games that we're going to cast tonight, and then more as we go along. Anyways, this has been I, Skittles, and I will see you later.